This time on Survivor Man, I'm heading deep into the Rocky Mountains. I've hired Matt Callahan, an experienced mountain pilot, to fly me well into the range where I have to spend the next seven days alone. The flight in will give me a chance to have an aerial look at some of the terrain that I'll be up against. Towering 7,000 feet above sea level, the mountain summits are exposed to high winds, driving rain and snow. The summit of a mountain is one of the most extreme environments on Earth. The weather this time of year, when you get up onto the tops here, I mean, how unpredictable is it? It uh, changes every five minutes. Hey, you'll go from okay. uh, 20 degrees and sunshine, and uh, the next minute there'll be a big old thunderstorm rolls over, uh, followed by four days of rain. Powerful systems moving in and out, but uh, being in the mountains, you know, you don't see it until they're right on top of you. Uh, to bears on a weekly basis. For the most part, uh, you know, it, it's a, it's a non-event. There's guys that have been out in the bush for 20 years, never carry a rifle, and never had a problem. There's other guys that step out of their Jeep and uh, get mauled. Yeah, right. some, something to be wary of. Wow, that's a big glacier. Nearly every mountaintop has a crevice-filled glacier on it. I have to survive here for the next seven days without a tent or sleeping bag, without matches or food, and I have to film everything myself. I'm being dropped on the mountain completely alone, and for one week, the mountain will test me. Home sweet home. And whatever happens, I'm on my own. This time on Survivor Man, I'm heading deep into the Rocky Mountains. This vast range is more than 300,000 square miles of barren mountaintops, cold glacial rivers, and steep valleys. The mountains test not only your skill level, but your will to live. Up here, the combination of the cold and the altitude sap your energy and it can lull you into what's called a fatal sleep. Up here there's a saying, stop thinking and you'll stop trying. Stop trying and you'll die. Oh boy, what did I get myself into this time? Oh my gosh. Somehow the word overwhelming just doesn't do it. I can see greenery anyway. It's just a question on if I can get to it. There they are. Guess they're getting their one last glimpse of the lone man on the mountain. Man. I am not getting paid enough for this. I have to survive here for the next week, but without any form of shelter, the first thing I need to do is get off this wind-swept summit. As far as I can tell, I've got cliff, 
cliff, glacier, and just more cliff. But the only route I can see is down this way. Just beneath the snow there, I can see green. I can see trees and greenery. And uh, one thing's for sure, the only path I have to safety right now is down. At this altitude, the thin air makes hauling more than 60 pounds of video camera gear a tough job. I know that spending a week on the top would be foolish. I'm heading down. A night up here would be brutal. I gotta slow down, let this sweat dry. Deadliest thing of all in a survival situation is to get all sweaty when you are in cold weather. The top of a mountain is about as inhospitable a place as you can get. Besides being completely exposed, there is little to nothing in the way of food. Another reason why I have to get moving. There is crystal clear water everywhere, so at least dehydration is not a problem. Ridges everywhere. Those trees don't look any closer. Not now, <laughs> can't even see them. It'd be easy getting down, then I gotta go back up again. Oh boy, this could be tricky. I have to survive alone for seven days. The first thing I need to do is get off the summit and down to the valley bottom. Oh, I've looked all around and I can't find any other way to get to that patch of green except across this glacier. Heading out onto a glacier alone any time of the year is foolhardy. Going out now right after some fresh fallen snow. I have to cross about a mile of this crevice filled glacier and the new snow can cover and hide most of the dangerous areas. Crossing this glacier alone is precarious. I'd feel a lot safer if I was roped off to a partner. This is by far one of the spookiest things I've ever done. That's where I came from. That's where I'm going. Oh man, here comes the rain again. Because, uh, man, I'm in and out of freezing bitter cold rain. And when the sun does come out, I start sweating. It looks like the wind is coming in on me. I don't like that. I'm getting bored on here and there's a few things I'd like to tell you about with these glaciers. I'm a little freaked out at the amount of crevices in my way, so I just want to get off of this thing. These glaciers move about 15 meters a year. Their movement opens up huge cracks. These crevices can be five stories deep. If I fall into one, I'll never be found. Oh, sometimes I wonder what I get myself into. Sunshine, too. <laughs> wow. Pretty spectacular. Still way in the distance. What's between me and them, I'm really not quite sure. I'm still many miles from the tree line, and it's not all downhill. It's a constant up and down and over rocks and ridges. I can't take the time to go through what little gear I have. I need to find shelter before dark. 
The rain is relentless, and the sun is going down quick. Well, this may not look very comfortable. That's because it isn't. I have not been able to make it down off of these rocks and into the tree line yet. And night is coming in and I don't want to get caught. This big rock here, at least I'm out of the wind and if it rains, I'm even out of the rain. This is it. This is where I've got to do my first night. Oh. oh, yeah. This is gonna be fun. So tonight, survival means sleeping under a rock while the rain comes down. It's been blowing and raining for hours. I didn't sleep much last night, but when I did, I'd wake up really quick with that chill running right down my spine. It's just right on the edge of hypothermia. So I'd squeeze all the muscles in my body and relax them. Squeeze them all and relax them. It gets the blood flowing through my body. Try to keep the chill out. That's a little too close to hypothermia for my liking. I don't have a tent, I don't have a sleeping bag, no matches, no food, just a pack full of heavy camera gear. The rain, the wind, and six days to go. Oh yeah, mountain blueberries. I think it's been about 48 hours now since I've eaten, and I'm getting hungry. This rain is miserable. It's freezing out here. I'm <clears throat> hunkered down under the rock, trying to keep away from it, but I gotta move. I gotta get off the top of this mountain, get into the meadows. You know what it's like? Just imagine turning your garden hose on full, on top of you, standing outside, spread eagle. Just see how long you can stand there with that kind of cold water coming down on you. That's what it's like here, right now. It's an old wolf den. There's wolf scat all along the bottom of this. So the wolves will come in here and den up when they need to. I might even consider staying in a crack like this, but it doesn't look very comfortable. So I'm gonna keep going. I'm soaked right through. There is just no shelter out here. These are very wet, slippery, and steep rock faces. Breaking an ankle here could be a death sentence. Yet getting shots like these means climbing them twice. This may look like a pretty cool shelter, and for one night, it'd be all right, you know? But you gotta think about things like earth tremors and uh, the fact is, all around me are fallen pieces of rock. They're down there for a reason. These things break off all the time. If you bring in something here like a, like a fire, the hot and cold can break pieces off. So maybe a one night quickie shelter is fine, but this rock is really cold on my body and uh, I wouldn't wanna be in here for a long time. You think I'm kidding about these rocks? But this guy here, you can tell it's come off pretty recently. You know, I even heard of a story where a guy was out on a day hike and a rock slide trapped him by his arm. He had to break his arm with a rock and sever it with his own pen knife. It's well into day two and all I've had to eat is a few berries. 
but after a long day of traveling, the first touch of forest greenery brings me a renewed sense of spirit. I'm slowly descending into more hospitable terrain. This looks like a paradise. I'm hoping that tonight I'll be able to build a shelter and stay dry. All of these meadows that I'm walking through right now are just riddled with animal trails like the one down there, left by woodland caribou, up here they call them mountain caribou, moose, and of course, grizzly bear. Hey, all of this moss was easy to pull up from the ground. I could use that for the bedding, try and keep myself up off the ground. I'm in a bit of a gully and normally that would be a no-no in terms of a, of a shelter, but I'm sort of up on this knoll here and that actually keeps me out of the wind a bit more. I uh, shoved in as much of the moss as I could all along this outer side here and then I started gathering boughs and sticking the boughs in. It's a pretty sort of standard kind of bush shelter here and it's, uh, I've got to make it now because that over there has one mean thunder and lightning storm. And this is, yeah, it's rumbling. This is the last place I want to be on the top of a mountain during a lightning storm. The rocks and the pebbles will actually stick to your boots with all the magnetics in the air and the electricity. Add to that tonight now, I'm in subalpine territory, home of the grizzly bear, home of the cougar. Les is gonna be pretty ragged. I mean, he's, he's lugging, I don't know how many pounds of camera gear. When you're doing that, you're burning up twice, three times the energy that you normally would have. He should be conserving fat and what he's doing is actually burning calories. Should have checked my supplies sooner. Got one of these emergency blankets. They say that it's kind of like how a yeah, roast a baked potato. We'll see just how warm it keeps me. Huh on the top of a mountain in the fall. Oh, this is my view. Looks like that storm's staying over there. I, that's a long, hard day and a wet one. I guess my biggest concern now is cougars hunt at night and the black bears and the grizzly bears will be out sniffing around. These blankets are supposed to work great if you can get them next to your skin, but the last thing I want to do is get naked in the wind and rain on the top of a mountain. It's day three of my week-long challenge to survive in the Rocky Mountains. No food, no matches, no tent. This was miserable, absolutely miserable night. You know, I've been three days now on this mountaintop, and it has rained, drizzled, or misted almost nonstop. I've got to get down to some lower elevations and affect my survival. Because up here, I'm not surviving at all. I'm just enduring. Oh. Even while I search for food, a constant challenge is keeping my cameras running in this non-stop rain. Yeah. Camera problems often get the better of me. Testing, testing. Let's try it again with the better sound now. Okay, sorry for the swearing. Can you tell the rain's getting the better of me? Yeah. Huckleberries, mm, and lots of them. Check out the little bounty I got here. Um, 
paintbrush. Just eat the little colored flowery parts. Rain or no rain, I gotta get off the top of this mountain. I'm just getting soaked constantly. That's my only way down. My only hope is that it's not so bad down in the valley. I'll see you on the bottom. Making my way off the mountain, I'm heading down into the shelter of the forest. But the crew, whose job it will be to pick me up at the end of the week, will have a tough time tracking me in this vast wilderness. It'll be easy for them to lose sight of me. Sun's coming out a bit. That's a surprise. But I gotta stick with that waterfall. Find my way down. The only way is to go up and around. Some bad spots. Oh. Every little step I take could be one where I snap an ankle. I have to be so diligent at watching where I'm walking. So I'll tell you one thing. They'd never, ever find me if I was trapped here. Look at this. Here's what I don't want to see. That's bear crap. Okay, that's bear droppings. Ah, oh, great. Okay, so it doesn't look like much to you. Trust me. It's about 20 feet. to the waterfall. I figure the best route down is to follow a mountain stream. It should lead me to a river. Just up from the river there, this big, huge, massive spruce tree, and it's very dry right here. Now, it was raining for a good week solid before I stepped foot on the mountain, and it's been raining ever since I have been on the mountain and look at this. It's bone dry. It's not gonna be comfortable at all, but this is a good, as good a place as any to uh, hold up for the night anyway. That's night number three. I tell you, it's a heck of a climb down from the top of a mountain, five or 6,000 feet. And uh, I don't think it's gonna rain again. Actually, it is starting to rain again, but this is pretty cool. It's one little spot under this tree, and it's just so dry. So I'm just gonna huddle beside the tree tonight and uh, see what I get tomorrow. It must be at least 10 degrees warmer down here than it was up on the top of the mountain. What I've got to do now is just come up with a quickie shelter, get through tonight. This is gonna be better though. More chance for gathering food, more chance for maybe hunting food. Now that I've made it to the bottom of the valley and the rain is breaking, I can finally go through my gear. 
Look at that glorious sunshine. I was beginning to doubt its existence. The circumstances that put me on the top of the mountain basically simulate heli-hiking gone wrong. I figured since it's centered around heli-hiking, this kind of survival, I can at least have a few items that I might be able to make use of for survival. Something indicative of being up there on the mountain. Ice axe makes perfect sense for crossing the glaciers. Walking stick, just an old ski pole. Crampons with a couple of carabiners on them. And uh, just the remnants of an old pack. You know, just uh, who knows what I can make use of with that stuff. A lot of people when they're heli hiking have a camera or a video camera of some sorts with them. So in this case, yeah, that's what I've got. A tripod and a video camera. Lastly, just a little cassette tape that would go in th uh, with the video camera, of course. And then lastly, always with me is my multi-tool, and this time, my harmonica. That's my happy song because the sun's out. Oh, one last thing, my emergency blanket. Let's just see what I can do with this guy. Keeping myself up off the cold, damp sand is vital to keeping the chills away. I have to admit it, my main reason for building here was for ease of filming. We'll see if being so close to the water's edge is a mistake or not. Oh. I should have known this was a real possibility. There were certainly lots of bear signs up on the mountaintop, but it's more likely that right now, this time of year, they're down low, they're down in these, uh, in these valleys. These tracks aren't all that old, considering the rain we've had. You can see that it's a uh, small bear, possibly grizzly, because the claws are poked up at the top here. And uh, hopefully it's just a small black bear wandering around on its own. Hopefully it's not a little one with a mama close by. One of the biggest problems I've had going through this forest Ow. is all because of this fella right here. It's called Devil's Club, and it is just covered with thorns. Stuff gets into your skin, and it just hurts very much. After a day full of sunshine, I just had a huge downpour of rain. Half hour just came teeming down. Anyway, shelter worked great, so I'm going to uh, crawl inside. Dark's coming in, and try and get a night's rest. Home sweet home. So we'll see how I do tonight. Feels okay though, you know. Feels a little bit protected. Not from bears, but from the wind and rain. Oh, it's just nice not to be freezing. Although I try to sleep while thinking about grizzly bears, I'll be waking up to a different problem. Oh man, 
It's been raining all night long, nonstop. I can't believe it. But I'm dry in here. That's the good thing. That's what I just discovered. The river has come up. That puts my shelter only about six feet from the water's edge now. This is not a good thing. In this brief moment, without any rain, I can point out to you that the water's come up another eight inches. So, uh, I don't know. I might be in for some trouble here, but it's coming up pretty fast. You gotta think, way up high in the mountains, the glacier's melting, the rain's hitting it, and everything, all those creeks are all funneling down into this one valley. This water just keeps coming up fast. There's nothing I can really do except wait it out to see how high the water might get. I've had enough of sitting and watching the flood come in. I've gotta get some food in my stomach. These are highbush cranberries. Mm. Normally, wouldn't eat these this time of year. They're better after a frost, then they get a little bit sweeter. Right now they're pretty bitter tasting. I'm actually not all that good with mushrooms and knowing which one is which. And see, the thing is, with mushrooms, if you're wrong, you're dead because many of them are deadly, deadly poisonous. This is called shaggy mane, I hope. Do not do this at home, kids. If you don't know, do not even touch it. Mm. I hope that was a shaggy mane, or I'm in big trouble. Take a look at this. That's on the river across from where I'm camped. That's clear-cut logging. That means there must be a road that leads to that. If it wasn't for a swollen river, I could probably find that road and walk out of here. There's no real way across to the old logging stand, so while the sun comes out, maybe I can try for a fire. Try to find some dry old man's beard. This stuff, uh, pretty damp. Doesn't feel super dry, but... Let's see. The ice axe is great for getting to some dry wood. Sounds like a helicopter to me. Huh. Right over top of me. They wouldn't have seen me no matter what. Unless I had a fire going. I've traveled so far from the mountain peak, I'm pretty sure that the crew has no idea where I am. There's two days of survival left, and a fire will make a big difference. First things first, though, pulling dry tinder out of a soaking wet forest. Stage one. Stage two. Rid of the damp stuff. Remember, all this wood around me is soaking wet. But if you can get to the inside of cedar, good and dry still. My possibility of having a flood seems to be uh, past now. The water has receded. That's good. Well, like I said, you might very well be the hiker that gets lost with a video camera or a camera. And sometimes you got to do what you got to do. closer to the meat of the issue. Whew. Ah. Can angle it, there we go, right about like that. Ow. I have no matches, but the camera lens will do the trick. Listen folks, I may have a very small window of opportunity here. The sun is breaking through a little bit stronger now. Over there on the pebbles behind me, the part that was actually um, flooded 
uh, a little while ago is the only place where I've got some sort of hot sun right now. And uh, look what I found. Okay, this was one of the um, pieces inside the camera. And in messing around with it, break this open here, okay? And this is just a little bit of dry paper. Okay, so I don't know if it's used for insulation or something. I have no idea. Not an electrician. Okay, here's the tinder bundle. All the cedar that I gathered, the old man's beard, there's the paper inside. If I get this, I'm gonna run back. I've got my pile of shavings ready to go to catch flame. I have to go out above the water to start a fire. Probably silly. Okay, where to put my lens? Where's the lens? Well, this isn't funny. Ah, this is not funny. Okay, I see it. Darn thing. Sitting right there. Hi, yeah, yeah. Make this happen with the camera as well. Uh, it might be too bright for you to see. But uh, there's a little spot I can make there. Okay. Where are you there? So you can see what I'm doing. Ah, forget it. All right, clouds are back out. It's just not strong enough. Look at all that beautiful sun out there. Well, I'm trapped in behind these trees. And uh, I've lost my son over on the pebbles as well in the, in the stream. And in that clearing where I was a couple hundred yards out there, that of course it's getting hit by the sun. So I'm gonna give it another shot. It's worth a try. One last thing. Camera's set up now on that, so when I come running back, I'll run over and uh, push the on. And with any luck, you'll see me back here in a bit with some flame in my hand. Big patch of blue. Come on, baby. It's gotta be getting hot there. Hope the camera's running. Hope there's enough tape in that camera. Can't move. I'm seeing the most smoke I've seen. All right. Here I go. Ha. Uh -huh. Okay. Come on. Yeah! <laughs> Woo -hoo! The first fire and the first real warmth I've had in five days. last night, but uh, not as much as before. Mostly this morning, early. Clouds look different today. I hear a helicopter. I've been hauling huge pieces of wood to keep the fire going in this rain, and it's been six days with only a few berries and a mushroom to eat. I need something more substantial. This is one of the, the pack that was left. From the leftover parts of a pack, I can make a tool for hunting.
There is grouse around here. Now, let's go see if it works. Seems to work not too bad. Making a slingshot is one thing, but finding something to hunt with it is another. I can use the moose trails to push through the forest and look for grouse. You know, trail or no trail, I've still got to make, mark my way to make sure that I don't get lost as I go through. That's the only way I'm going to remember, breaking some branches over. Sorry about all the raindrops on the lens all the time. It's pretty much impossible to keep wiping the lens and keep it dry. This feels more like moose territory than it does grouse or ptarmigan. Well, lots of fresh moose tracks here. Catching the moose is a little unrealistic for me, though. That's pretty much the area I came down from. This is spectacular here. This is getting too mucky for my liking. I think I'm walking deeper into a swamp here. Let me get out of here. Yeah, I'm just in a big bog. I'm gonna circle around and get out of this mess before it gets deeper on me. All I really accomplished with this hunting trek was to get more muddy, wet, and exhausted. That ought to keep the bears away. Stop raining! It's uh, morning, the final morning, and of course, it's raining. I don't know if the helicopter's gonna be able to find me down here or not, but I'm gonna be ready with a bit of a signal fire, if he is. If not, I'm not sure what I'll do. I might see if I can make my way out to one of those logging roads, I don't know. But I'm not gonna stay here. Fire's still going though. That's all that matters right now. Helicopter is flying around trying to spot me. Bit of a mad rush. I'm counting on the crew to have figured out that I would have made my way down to the river. Whether or not they can spot my fire is another story. Wet spruce boughs on a hot fire will give me the most amount of smoke. Let's see if you can spot that. I've been drenched for seven days. I've eaten nothing more than a few berries and a couple of mushrooms. If there was ever a time when I looked forward to dry, warm clothes and a hot plate of food, it's now. Does it ever not, right? Mountain survival has turned out to be one of my greatest challenges. 